this is such a fun question. Like, what is outside the universe? What's out, what's out there? Okay. In order to answer the question, what's outside the universe, you need to define what you mean by the word universe. Do you mean the observable universe, the observable patch, the limit of what we can see? That limit is about 90 billion light years across. What's outside of that? That's an easy question. It's just more stuff. There are more galaxies. There are, there are more cosmic voids. There are more clusters. There are more stars and planets. There might be intelligent life out there beyond our observable limit. We're pretty sure in cosmology that our universe is much, much larger than our observable limit. And also, we're pretty dang sure because, you know, we measured this, that at a certain scale, once you get up above around 100 million light years, the universe is pretty much uniform. You can take like a 100 million light year chunk and compare it to a, another randomly chosen 100 million light year chunk. And yeah, like the arrangement of galaxies will be different. There'll be a different pattern, but statistically, they'll be basically the same. Like statistically the same number in sizes of voids, statistically the same number in sizes of galaxies. Uh, they'll just be in a different arrangement, but, but basically the same components. And once you get above that scale, the universe is homogenous. So anything outside of our observable bubble is going to be roughly the same thing. You know, just... You'll go if you were to somehow travel past that boundary, which you can't, so don't worry about it, but that's a different show. If you're to be able to travel past that boundary, it would, you know, it's like one stretch of freeway compared to another. Like, okay, the tree is on the right hand side instead of the left hand side. Like, whoop de doo. That's the only difference. Otherwise, it's just the same. But there are other definitions of universe that you might want to use not just observable universe. So you like, maybe you mean universe as in a piece of the multiverse where we have one patch with our sets of physics, our physical laws, and then somewhere very, very, very ex extremely far away, there's another patch with, with its own laws and it's, and it's separating away from us. And so you can ask what's outside of our patch of the universe would be vacuum. And then you'd encounter, if you could catch up, which you can't, but it's another episode, if you could catch up with another one of those big giant universes with its own set of physics, like you would just encounter that. And then there'd be a long stretch of nothing. And then, a, and then another one, a long stretch of nothing. And then another one. Okay. That's that definition of universe, but let's take the ultimate definition of universe. The, the like the literal definition of all there is everything, all the things. What is outside of that? Well, in one view, you could argue, well, by definition, the universe is all the things. So if there's an edge with an outside, well, outside is still a thing, right? So that's included in the definition of universe. And so, yeah, it's just all, it, it's everything. There's no such thing as outside. It's like, okay, okay, if I'm going to define my home to be, you know, the wall, that's one thing. But if I define my home to be all the things, well, out in here is house stuff and out there is grass, but grass is a thing. And so I should be able to extend my definition out to include that. So maybe the universe is infinite and there's no such thing as an outside because it is literally all the things and every possible conceptual idea of volume is occupied by universe. So if the universe is infinite, there's nothing outside because it's infinitely big. Okay. But, but, as we saw in the last episode, we're not exactly sure if the universe is infinite or not. It's perfectly possible for the universe to be large, but also finite. In which case, you're going to ask, you're going to ask, like, what's outside of it? If the universe is finite, if there is a size, what is outside that universe? Well, in some models of physics, some exotic models of gravity, our three-dimensional universe is embedded in a higher dimensional construct. Okay, whatever. So like our three dimensions, three spatial dimensions of our universe is embedded in a four-dimensional bulk. Okay, whatever. We don't know if those are correct or not. We just don't. But if our universe is finite, 
there doesn't have to be an outside. And this is the craziest thing to think about. And it's almost impossible to think about. If our universe is finite, there does not have to be an outside. Like if I ask you to envision the universe, just, just close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes right now. Uh, unless there's an ad, then watch the ad so I get revenue. But close your eyes. And imagine the universe. You're probably imagining like a ball that's filled with galaxies and stars and like a cosmic web. And it's really cool. You, you, the mental image you probably have, the mental image I'm guessing you have is that of an astronaut orbiting the earth and you're seeing the whole thing serenely below you. And you're like, wow, look at that old globe of the earth. Isn't that awesome? From our perspective. That's probably how you envision the universe from the outside. But here's the thing. In order to do that, in order to envision the universe from an outside perspective, either there's some boundary of the universe and then you're, out, you're just over here, in which case this includes universe, like even void, empty vacuum is still part of the universe because the universe is all the thing, in which case you haven't actually gotten the outside perspective that you thought you did. You're actually still in the universe. Or... Our universe is embedded in a higher dimensional construct and you've like gone outside, like you've gone outside the two dimensional surface of the earth and you've popped up into a third dimension so you can see the whole thing at once, which might or might not be true. But even, even a finite universe that is not infinite, that is, that is not embedded in some higher dimensional construct does not have an outside. And it's impossible to think about. You can't envision it. It's not that the answer to the question of what's outside of a finite universe is nothing, because nothing is a thing. It's an entity, which means it's a part of the universe. In order to be truly outside the universe, like you, you can't be unless we're embedded in a higher dimensional construct, you know, uh, unless the universe is infinite, but a finite universe has no boundary and a finite universe has no outside or doesn't have to have an outside and you can't imagine it. You literally can't picture what it's like to be outside of a finite thing. Well, I mean, in three dimensions, you can be outside of a two dimensional thing. Like you can be outside of the two dimensional surface of the earth and see it from this third dimensional perspective, but you can't envision thinking outside of a three-dimensional thing. You just can't. I'm sorry if that's unsatisfying, but that's the way it is. The mathematics is crystal clear here. The mathematics that we use to describe the universe, to do our physics and cosmology, doesn't require an outside. The universe is just all there is, and then that's it. Asking the question, what's outside the universe, is like asking the question, what does the color purple smell like? And don't say grape. I know you're being smart, but the color itself has no smell. It's a nonsense question. You're taking two separate concepts and trying to merge them together in one concept, in one question. You can't saying what's outside the universe is taking two separate concepts, the concept of outside and the concept of universe and trying to smoosh them together when you can't. What is outside the universe? There is no such thing. The answer is not nothing because nothing's a thing. The answer is that is a nonsense question. And I know it breaks your brain to think about. It does mine too, but that's exactly why we have mathematics because mathematics are a tool to help us understand things and grapple with things and comprehend things that we literally can't imagine. Hope you enjoyed this video or not. I'm sorry if it was unsatisfying, but that's the way it is. I will see you next week. Uh, please go to patreon.com slash PM Sider to keep these shows going. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you next time inside the universe.